All right, so picture this with me. Uh, you've made it through the classroom portion of PA school, and now you're going out on rotations, and you're going to start a rotation that you're not familiar with. And so you look at the pants blueprint, and you think, oh, my goodness, there is so much to study. Yeah. You know, to, to wrap my mind around how can I prepare for this? And that's a question we get often is how do I prepare for a rotation? How do I, what's the best way to study? Because you can't study everything. Welcome back to the PA Startup Podcast. Before we get started, if you would, we would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. Uh, we just appreciate it. It helps us spread the word to more PAs. Um, definitely leave a comment below. We read all of them, and uh, we need something to do while we're waiting for our next surgery to start. So you're about to start your next rotation, maybe your first rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really make a difference, but how can you better prepare yourself uh, for that rotation before getting started? I think maybe one of the best tips is to kind of narrow your focus. What impresses us as preceptors, in my opinion, is someone that just comes in and has a solid foundation of, oh yeah, I know that. And mm -hmm. I know maybe the first or second line treatment more than someone that comes in and knows some tidbit about some special medication right. that they read somewhere. Right. I think there's a, there is a pressure that is felt on your rotations to share how much knowledge you have you know maybe you see something that you sort of understand so you blurt out everything that that you can think of and as a preceptor I, that's not overly impressive because you're you're missing the point the point is to apply your knowledge to the situation and and figure out what's what's pertinent and what isn't pertinent so we're more impressed with someone who if i said hey you know the patient's allergic to this and this what's another pain medicine we could use for them? And the people that are like, well, you could try this one. Perfect, that's it's great. A, it's simple. It's functional, but, it's it's important. You yeah. will be asked those questions. Um, if we said, what's another example? Um, Nausea, I'm, yeah. my patient's nauseated. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, I do Zofran. Well, that's not been working. Okay, right. what's the next one? What's maybe the next maybe one? it's yeah. just like the top two. And if you don't know the third one, right. oh, it's fine. If you can know the basics, then we'll help you learn the extra stuff. Right. But if you don't know the basics and you know these special, these zebras, we used to call them in school, right? right? Just the zebras. I don't expect you to know that, but I need you to know, you know, what atrial fibrillation looks like on an EKG. Mm -hmm. so. Right, right. I don't I don't need to know that you can see the re-entry, yeah. you know, beat or something like that, but... Um, well, Chris, did you uh, measure the PR interval? Yeah, no. I, no. Don't, I don't think I bought calipers. Does it matter for <laughs> sure, right? Like in certain circumstances. Sure. But I, I guess I, as a student, should you know about it? Yes. But I want you to more know the basics that can that we can then apply to what we're seeing right. every day. Right. I think, too, the, the school is great because it, it gives you a lot of exposure to words and to diagnoses. I have all the best words. <laughs> Sound like Donald Trump. <laughs> That's a quote from him, isn't oh, it? Oh, is it really? Whether you like him or hate him, it was funny when he said it. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. You, you get exposed to a lot of um, ver a variety of topics and things, but but the beauty of rotations is that you learn how to then apply those to a patient. Because I was actually, I don't know how you were on rotations, but I was shocked when I got into a room. I was like, oh my goodness, how am I ever going to get the right information out of this person? I don't even know what to ask. You know, like mm -hmm. I had all this stuff in my head, but I couldn't like, why are you here today? Oh, my throat's sore. And you're like, okay, what are all the sore throat things? You know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was overwhelming. So I remember a specific example of something where, you know, knowing this, the basic answer or the more common answer was the best thing we could have said, which was on my internal medicine rotation, we saw a patient, very obvious, looked like they had cellulitis on their face and the attending it was a group of us, students and residents. And all right, a couple differential diagnoses. In my mind, I'm like, cellulitis. But I ain't going to say it because there's a couple <laughs> other people there that are way smarter than me and I don't want to be wrong. And I feel a lot of students fall into that trap of I don't want to be wrong, so I'm not going to say anything, even yeah. though the most common answer, whether it's wrong or not, is still not a bad answer mm -hmm. because, okay, that kid knows at least what he's looking at. So cellulitis eventually gets thrown out there. Erysipelas gets thrown out there. Yep. And then this the resident is like, cavernous sinus thrombosis. And I'm like, what? And my face <laughs> must have said something because next thing you know, my homework is to go look up cavernous sinus thrombosis, find out what it is. Well, it's like one in a million, like more than oh, that. It's like goodness. some ridiculous number. Yeah. And I remember the attending looking at them being like, 
sure. But no. Yeah. But that's no. not even that's not a zebra, that's a unicorn. And it, it almost <laughs> comes out to that like listen, like I'm glad you know that. But like why? Like right. that knowledge is good, put it shuffle somewhere in the file, mm -hmm. but like you should know cellulitis or erysipelas, mm -hmm. something that's way more common because that's more than likely what it is. Right. And we're more impressed by someone that knows the basics than pulls that I'm almost annoyed. Right. Right. When and someone that like little whips tidbit, that thing out. Uh, you know what? I uh, I think that's a good point that a lot of people are afraid to look stupid. And so they blurt out the first smart sounding thing in their mind. And I don't know how to fix that because I was nervous too. I remember what that's like, but you, it was because I was so wrapped up in the just volume of, of every specialty that we were rotating through. I, I couldn't kind of narrow down what I needed to know about stuff. One of the best pieces of advice that I got and then I have given to others is um, literally go to Google, type in top 10 diagnoses for whatever your rotation is. I am uh, internal medicine, OBGYN, cardiology, family medicine, orthopedics. Just look at those top 10 diagnoses, start there and 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 just know what it looks like how it presents um you know some of the first and second line treatments and if you want to get crazy you can get into like what's the differential diagnosis which is the what what else could it be yeah. with these similar signs that if someone came in with a top 10 i mean shoot in cardiac surgery it's not there i don't even think there's 10 diagnoses <laughs> i mean there's more than 10 but it's basically if you came into our rotation and you knew you know coronary disease valvular disease you know, let's say aortic valve disease, mitral valve disease, AFib. Aneurysms. Aneurysms, lung cancer. Wow, you are like so far ahead of the curve. And you guys, yeah. if you're in school learning that stuff, those are all things that ring a bell. You're like, oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's pretty mainstream. That's actually pretty like, easy. Like, oh, not, the if valve doesn't said, work. Oh, do they have a, a myxoma? You'd be like, well, I don't know. Yeah. But, but you don't, we don't expect you to know that. Right. Do they right? have bleb disease in their lungs? Yeah. Uh, it's more of a zebra. Yeah. We're not, I mean, we see it, but. Know the common stuff. So common thing, the, the rule is common things happen commonly. Yeah. That's why they're common. So, so look, learn the common stuff. Don't worry about interpreting a, a lower extremity arterial Doppler report. Yeah. Don't worry about it that that's that's for later what you need to know is their their toes are blue and i'm and the the two reasons it could be is number one and number two i don't know what they are so <laughs> i call vascular but... consult vascular. consult vascular if your answer is ever to consult some other specialty you are a winner and we will hire you <laughs> it's I... always should be number one we should probably consult the specialist <laughs> zms keeps track of all of the codes that are submitted for conditions and so you know everything gets classified hypertension or atrial fibrillation or pneumothorax or whatever it might be so they will publish every year they'll say here's the top you know top diagnoses you can download an excel spreadsheet with thousands of answers or results on it but all you need is the top 10 ones because those are the common ones um learn you know figure out what they are and then go to one of those resources that we mentioned and just kind of skim it overview it you don't have to know it perfectly you know a couple like i said a couple first line treatments what the signs and symptoms are maybe what some labs would be what the next step for diagnosis might be and that's it and that by itself i think is gonna be so impressive to a preceptor that you yeah. took the time to to do that or or that you just oh this person's got a solid foundation okay now we can get into the more tricky stuff but if on day one you talk about cavernous sinus thrombosis i'm going to be like okay this is going to be a bit of a month but don't know the first line treatment but for don't but don't know for cellulitis cellulitis right. that's that's where you get just if you can know the basics and you have a solid foundation then everything else is easier for yeah. us it's easier for you for sure and you don't feel as overwhelmed right because if i can learn the basics all right i got it I got it. Right. And I can go in. I don't have to sit there at home. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. What if I walk in there tomorrow and someone has cavernous sinus thrombosis and I didn't look it up? Right. They probably don't. Right. So Right. Right. And that doesn't mean that for boards you don't have to study and, and know the, the wider variety. But, you know, the specific question that was asked was how do I how do I prepare for a rotation? Because you want to. You want to be confident. You want to look good in front of the preceptor, but there's a fine line between looking good and then showing off. So don't feel like you have to vomit up all the information. Depending on your specialty, there are a few textbook things out there. Yes. Uh, textbooks, I should say, that are 
good resources. And I'm going to, I really didn't have this planned, reach over and grab one, for example, for our cardiology rotation. Look at this guy. I really didn't. Don't worry, this isn't planned, you know this guys. Has been sitting no, there. it has been sitting there for like two weeks. But, but like, this is like a solid EKG book. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's and good a lot one. of you have probably seen it, just rapid interpretation of EKGs. Besides like your BLS or ACLS courses, like that's something where if you're going on a cardiology rotation, that'd be a nice book to have at home, maybe don't memorize it, but have it available. Mm -hmm. So when you see a weird rhythm, oh, okay, I'm going to go home and look up just, Wanky Bach and just read it a little right. bit more. For surergery, um, surgical oh, yeah. recall. Surgical recall. I have that one not here, Excellent but downstairs. Book. But books like that, and like I said, we'll put some links down uh, if you guys don't have them to buy them. But find a good resource like that that's simple. And there's a lot out there, but you could even Google like good textbook resource for internal medicine besides Current. Because mm -hmm. Current, I feel like, is the Bible for a lot of PA students. And it's solid, but it is a lot. It's a lot of information. There's there The surgical current is also very good, but it's pretty detailed. Yeah. You don't need that level. Now, let's say you're maybe going to graduate and you have a job in internal medicine. Get current. Get it. Oh, that yeah. is, then don't, dig into don't it. Don't worry about your clinical medicine textbooks. Look at current. Yeah. If you're in a surgical job, current surgical diagnosis and treatment, exceptional book. Um, they have current volumes for a lot. Pulmonary, uh, mm -hmm. gastroenterology. Uh, they have a lot of different ones. So... Um, those are excellent resources. Also, Family Practice Notebook um, is a, a website that has free resources on it. It's basically articles and articles about stuff. Um, another one that is, it's a little pricey. I don't know as a student, but as a professional, it's a little pricey, but um, up to date is an amazing resource. So if you if you have, and, and we're not affiliated with any of the, the websites or anything no. like that. Um, I wish. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, but you know, you don't feel like you have to buy a book for every rotation. Maybe go in with a couple classmates and, and split the cost of a book. Or, um, you know, if you know someone that has it, you know, borrow it from them or offer to rent it from them or whatever. So Garner, how did you prepare for rotations? <laughs> <laughs> All the advice I give you comes from <laughs> maybe doing things wrong. Mm. You made it through though. I made it through. I made it through. I fall into the category of PA students that may be prepared less than most. <laughs> it's a very delicate way of saying Maybe. <laughs> most or all? My, my truck <laughs> became the place where people drank beer after our tests. <laughs> That's what I was known for in PA school. Um, but it was a stress relief. That's yeah, how I prepared. There you Listen, go. I ain't trying to get too worked up about anything. That's right. I'm here. I knew the basics, and I did. The thing was, I knew it. Right. So I didn't go out of my way to try to like, I don't, when I say try to be the best, it's not that I didn't want to be the best, but I wasn't going to be the know-it-all in yeah. the group. So I was like, right. I'm comfortable with my knowledge. And I did. I bought the books I told you about for those rotations. So if I was going to go do a lap coli, I could look up, okay, I need to know this, this, and this. Okay, got it. Right. And I was prepared. So if I got asked the question, okay, I know the basics. And I had no problem saying, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Because I, I didn't want to look extra stupid making something up. Yeah. So how did you prepare? Look, my biggest struggle was making sure that I didn't wear the same shirt and pants two days in a row because I think I think I had two pairs of pants and maybe three shirts and like five ties. I don't know. I kind of looked at, I opened books and I like left them open and I hoped that something would get in. <laughs> yeah. Osmosis. It didn't. Didn't it you didn't, sleep at the library? Yeah, uh, that was, yeah, I did. To get away from the kid. I, I had a baby at home. We weren't sleeping much. And Jana, so turn it off. I, Don't watch this part. She hasn't she hasn't seen any of these videos. Don't worry. <laughs> we had a baby at home and I wasn't sleeping real well. And so I would I'd make sure I get to class and then I would go study. And I can't be bothered while I'm studying. And immediately I would open a book and then <laughs> just face plan in it for about an hour. But I made it through and it's all good. So I, tr I did, I printed, so in all honesty, I did try to print the pants blueprint and I tried to look through all of the, the sections. I didn't, I could, you can't, you can't get through all of them. You're going to do fine. You're not going to know everything, but you know a lot. You're smart. Rotations mm -hmm. is the fun part. You get to learn about right, stuff. Right. You get to see it firsthand. And, and there's going to be days that you don't know something and someone's going to make you feel stupid about it. And that's okay. Don't worry about it because who cares? Honestly, like it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I think it's more important to be easygoing, um, to be humble. Yeah. And if you can do those two things and just say, oh, okay, thanks. I'll check that out tonight. I'll read about that tonight. 
then you're fine. It's the people that try to show off that really get punched in the face. But if you try to come at a preceptor with a ton of, you know, really detailed information, they're going to punch you back with something. They're going to make you feel dumb. So, you know, solid foundation. That's what you're looking for. Thanks for coming by, guys. Uh, Definitely like and subscribe the video if you would. Uh, Leave us a comment below and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks, guys.